Unless you've been living under a rock, you will have heard about the Log4J vulnerability Log4 shell. This was disclosed in early December and the repercussions have been far reaching. I leave it to Rudy, our product manager at Payara, to explain more about what it is and what it means, but we wanted to catch him to gather his thoughts. It's worth stressing that all Payara products have been checked and they're not affected by the vulnerability, but if you are using the library, we recommend that you upgrade to the latest version of Log4j. Any security issues are learning opportunity, so I wanted to pick Rudy's brains on implications of log 4 shell and preventing similar incidents. So first things first, um, if you have somehow managed to miss it, um, Rudy, can you sum up log 4 j and log 4 shell for anyone who hasn't by any chance heard about it? Yeah, sure. I can uh, shortly explain uh, the log 4 shell vulnerability. Because most vulnerabilities are rather complex and difficult to explain because it is a combination of factors, some weird things going on and, uh, and, 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 and things that uh, are used. But this one is rather easily uh, to explain uh, that uh, also explains the score of 10, uh, which is rather unusual uh, for a vulnerability uh, because it is uh, such an important one. Also, the fact that the vulnerability was immediately exposed on the internet, uh, so the, uh, the one who found out immediately published all the facts around it uh, without contacting the owners of the framework and made it a zero-day zero day vulnerability, which means uh, it could be uh, used by any attacker uh, immediately. So yeah, Log4j, it's a popular, uh, probably the most popular uh, logging framework. And besides the messages you, uh, it's, uh, itself, you always have to uh, put some information about the entries uh, in the log file, like timestamps and uh, when uh, did it happen, um, which client made that request, that, for instance, the type of browser and, and operating system, etc. Um, and in those messages, uh, you most of the time have placeholders uh, that need to be resolved, like have the placeholder for knowing the type of browser, uh, which is uh, read from the user agent header. But those frameworks always also use lookups, uh, so for replacement of some obscure or not easy to decipher data to more uh, easily readable data, like uh, the real username. So the combination of those placeholders and the lookups in the Log4j framework uh, made it possible that um, if you put some carefully crafted um, expression in the user agent that some code was looked up outside of your organization and that uh, Java code was executed on your server itself. That means, of course, that any kind of code, um, vulnerable uh, code, code placed uh, there by the hacker could be executed on the server and that means then, of course, that uh, they could get control over the server, they could uh, retrieve data from the network, etc. So by accepting uh, the submitted information uh, without proper input validation and uh, made this uh, vulnerability possible uh, by allowing the remote code execution. Great, thank you for that. Um... Were you surprised or did you do you think it's inevitable that vulnerabilities like uh, the Log4j vulnerability happen? Not really surprised because um, vulnerabilities are discovered uh, each week, uh, each, each month. Um, that happens um, regularly. Of course, it does not always have the same large impact as here with that Log4j uh, incident. Um, but yeah, it, it, it happens all the time and we need to be aware of, of that it can happen. And we always need to think about um, how, is, uh, how certain people can use the combination of features uh, um, that are available in our system uh, to their own benefit uh, to the, uh, and that are unwanted, uh, like that remote code execution or retrieval of, of your personal data. Um, but most of the time it is a rather complex uh, situation, uh, so um, it is um, very difficult to determine upfront if it's possible or not. So 
you cannot avoid those things. And uh, yeah, it, and as I mentioned, it happens um, all the time. So I'm not really surprised um, that those things happen. And um, so with it happening all of the time, how can you as an application developer provide the optimum protection for your application from remote code vulnerabilities? There are, I think, two um, ways to try to protect yourself uh, because it's 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 always uh, something that you need to strive for that you have an optimal protection, although you cannot guarantee it uh, in most cases. Um, first of all, yeah, the developers um, themselves needs to try to see what the best practices are around uh, security. Um, for instance, they can um, have a look at the OWASP top 10 um, vulnerability list. There, that improper input validation as that log4j uh, issue was, is also there on that list. So um, if you know, if you are aware what can be um, causing some security issues, then, and, um, then you can try to mitigate them. And if you write code yourself, you can try to avoid them. Um, but it's not only your own code, of course, eh, because here it was log4j. It was not uh, the, the code of the developer itself for an application. So if you are using frameworks, then um, you should always check um, how they can be misused. Of course, it's also responsible of the frameworks themselves and the products them, themselves to do some proper checking. But as I mentioned, uh, it can be the combination of a certain factors. Um, that makes uh, a certain vulnerability happen happening. So you always need to uh, do your homework and see um, what can be done and how you can avoid it. And it's not only open source eh, because this one was now related to open source. It can be with any product or any framework, open source or commercial or whatever. Uh, so it is a your responsibility, a shared responsibility um, that uh, you try to um, bring your application up to the highest standards and the highest security levels. And you can use some tools uh, like the sneak scanner uh, to help you with that. But uh, it's most of the time it is an awareness uh, with the developers um, themselves and the organization as a whole. Great, thank you. Um, so there was a quote on Log4j that I found interesting. It was Jake Williams at BreachQuest, and he said, every organization with a security team knows what needs to be done to hunt down Log4j. They just need the resources and political backing to actually get it done. Being exploited through an internet facing system running vulnerable Log4j at this point is a leadership failure, not a technical one. So I wanted to ask you, do you agree? And we at Payara reacted quickly to check our products. And so maybe you can briefly explain the rationale and the leadership decisions behind that. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that, uh, with that quote uh, in the sense that, as I mentioned, it is the responsibility of the organizations themselves to uh, make sure that ev everything is um, as it should be. So they should ch also check to uh, to see if there is any kind of vulnerability possible. Um, and as, and as, uh, so if you are providing applications for your end user, then and you're serious about it, then of course you try to protect your end users as much as possible, of course. Um, it's not always easy to know all the things, uh, of course. Uh, it, it's, as I mentioned, uh, those combinations can sometimes be very um, exotic and, uh, and special, but it is indeed a um, decision on the organization level of how many uh, resources and um, effort you put in security. And for some organizations, that is, in my opinion, a bit too little uh, that uh, people don't um, look after those things enough and that they should put more effort in uh, putting everything in a secure way on the Internet in, in that sense. Um, yes, at PR we checked uh, immediately. Uh, we, we already know that we don't um, use Log4j in our source code, um, but to be certain, uh, we d d double checked, of course, ev everything uh, with several people so that uh, if uh, someone misses it, then um, someone else might catch uh, a certain possibility that we are using it. 
Um, and I found it um, normal that we immediately announced that um, Payara was not affected uh, because that, of course, released the burden for our customers, for our users. Uh, because if you know that Payara is not affected, then of course you can scrap that already from your list and concentrate on other things. Because since it was so widespread, um, in theory, every Java program could be affected. So that would mean that um, a, that a lot of work for the organizations uh, could be a bit more uh, easier if we already immediately said, well, we are not affected, so you can you can skip our product. That's great. And and finally, Rudy, um, will this vulnerability change the way you work or think about security in future? Um, and if so, how? It did not change uh, the way I think about security, but uh, it was more a wake up call. Um, I was already aware and doing uh, most of the things that was needed, but um, the fact that something happened like this as such a widespread issue, um, made me even more aware of the potential issues that there are um, if you are using frameworks, if you are writing code. So it was more a wake-up call, and that there was more that there is more attention needed uh, in general uh, from developers, from um, from people uh, within the organizations that um, you need to have to have a proper security. Um, p p policy and that you should have procedures um, to check as much as possible uh, that you could avoid those things like uh, vulnerability um, happening. So it did not change it. It was more a, a, a wake up call that it is very important. Thank you so much, Rudy. And hopefully uh, we've given you some food for thought about security um, and ensuring that your Java applications are as secure as possible. Um, make sure to tune in to the next Quickfire Java video uh, monthly and yeah, stay stay safe out there in the Java world. Thank you, Rudy. Cheers. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye.